Hi, welcome to a tight closure uh, screencast. And this is going to be a quick one, but a really cool one. I'm excited to introduce the uh, tight closure REPL and its integration into the, uh, the compilation pipeline. So previously, typed closure has been an offline uh, type checker. Most type checkers are mandatory type checkers, like Scala's or Java's, that, that simply implicitly run whenever you compile code. Um, so as part of some, some work that I'm currently uh, crowdfunding uh, on gradual typing for, type, for closure, uh, I've been integrating typed closure into the compilation pipeline. And I just want to demonstrate a few things. Uh, if you want to try it out, maybe uh, help me squash some bugs. Uh, but yeah, let's jump straight in. So the first thing you need to do uh, to, to test this out, uh, add these dependencies to your project CLJ if you're using, using Linogen. So we're using uh, Clojure 170, uh, the latest release client, and the latest alpha for uh, core typed uh, 0.3.0. And we're going to have to add these, uh, this REPL middleware. Uh, this basically allows us to intercept uh, interactions at the REPL and type check them implicitly based on the current namespace. So um, I'm just going to undo all this stuff and uh, we'll start from an untyped namespace. So this is a, a a very simple file, it's a normal closure file, uh, it's called screencast2.core and it has a function foo. It's clearly, if you invoke this thing, it's going to throw a type error. Uh, but we're going to try a few things and, and uh, gradually move it to, uh, to typed closure and uh, show off how we can use the new typed integra integration. So if we require it normally, uh, yeah, this is completely normal. So uh, the way we activate uh, type closure is to add this metadata to our NS form. And we need to reload this file because it's already been loaded. So now notice that type closure is detected, that it's a, we're evaluating a typed file. So we built type closure and it took a little while to, um, to load. But we have a static type error. Great. Uh, line six, you know, uh, right here, this uh, macro expanded increment function. And just before we uh, go into exactly the details of this error, let's just get rid of this annoying. Uh, little, let's make this a little easier to read. So type closure prints uh, types based on the current namespace. So let's require the current namespace and, and give it a name and save our file and reload again. Great, that's a little easier. So basically what this is saying is uh, we're expecting a, uh, a number uh, it, that's declared as the domain of increment and the actual argument type is a symbol, the, uh, the value A, uh, the symbol A. So um, I guess we can fix this now and uh, the easiest way to do this is to annotate foo to take a number, I don't know, to a number, and let's just say it wraps increment. Uh, save it, and we'll reload. And notice we have a duplicate var annotation here. So this actually, uh, this is kind of re revealing a bit of uh, flexibility I've introduced into type closure. Uh, beforehand, every check NS call completely wiped all annotations. So you'd effectively, effectively need to reload all typed code, every check NS, all your transitive dependencies. So this is clearly not, uh, not uh, feasible in a normal REPL situation. So this works exactly as require does. Uh, it doesn't delete things implicitly, like if require doesn't delete a def, then uh, type closure won't delete an annotation for that def. So basically what this duplicate var annotation is saying that there was a previous inferred type for foo, which is probably any to any or any to error, uh, and now it's, been, now it's changed. So uh, basically if we run that again, the, the annotation hasn't changed. 
So there's a bit of flexibility, uh, we'll, we'll trade off some safety, but you know, this is just, uh, this is pretty much needed for REPL uh, development. So what can we do next? Uh, so let's actually go into this namespace and evaluate some forms. Is this the current namespace? Yeah. Ah, so there's actually a little quirk with using this core typed uh, uh, metadata in the NS form. The NS form doesn't always add metadata. It turns out the first time you uh, create the N the namespace, it'll add the metadata, and then subsequent times it won't add the metadata. The reason it worked before is because when we require something, uh, we're actually reading this file, so type closure gets to read this file and say, does it have core type metadata? Unfortunately, we've just, in the same session, we've uh, switched namespaces. There's a couple of ways we can fix this. I guess w we could, of course, uh, change our... Uh, reload our namespace. I don't know, it might be educational the way I, I do this here. Uh, so we're going to alter the metadata of the current namespace to have core type map to true. Um, and we're going to ignore that. Uh, the type checker is going to skip that. Uh, that's should be an associate. This is why we use type checkers. Haha. <laughs> Whoops. Alright, so great. Um, oh, there's a little bug there. Doesn't know that we're using the uh, a prefix. But look, we have uh, the current type printed in our uh, uh, our REPL output. So we can uh, filter things. It knows that we have, when we filter using our occurrence typing, uh, we've inferred this to be a sequence of numbers. Uh, and if we invoke a type error, we should get exactly the same type error that we got before. Notice that uh, we don't get a runtime error. This, uh, what actually happens is type closure, uh, it type checks this, and if there's a static type error, then it doesn't evaluate it. So if there, uh, previously typed closure would have side effects such as print lines, and uh, even if there were errors, it would still run the code. Uh, so there are side effects. The way type closure works, it, it, every top level form, it, uh, it type checks it, evaluates it, and then goes to the next one, type checks, evaluates, type checks, evaluates. And this is just, needed uh, for normal closure evaluation. Uh, think of the case where the first uh, form defines a macro or something that the reader needs, even a def, uh, and then the next form uh, uses that macro or variable. So this is just the, the way the closure compilation is. So I think that's all I want to show uh, for the moment. Uh, please check out the, the crowdfunding uh, Site. It'll be linked in the readme for this, uh, this screencast. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, and have a great one. See ya.